I V M. कृपया ध्यान दीजिए The language used on the podcast may not be fit for consumption. We warn you, tread carefully. But listen, yar, don't be so conservative. All righty, great news here on Cock and Bull. After a long time, one of our modern legends, living greats, Akash joins us. Uh-huh. He's been very busy shooting ads and making music. Uh, Side, I didn't know about him you know, actually. Uh, talk about that a bit. But first, Yogi Adityanath, India's uh, greatest human being, bar none. Was in Mumbai last week, and of course, usual traffic discrepancies and all, which I love and enjoy because they always have to come to the Malwa Hill area. They have to be there when you're leaving or coming back. It's like a a phobia of theirs. Let's get brocha. Whatever we do, we must get brocha. But the second thing is that he's offered the film industry from Mumbai everything they want to come to Lucknow and UP. All kinds of subsidies, money, everything they need. You know, unlimited time. Uh, you can you can shoot for twenty four hours, all that. No, I think it's a great idea. But here's my question: Is this going to be uh, subject-based when you apply for, you know, help from the UP government and work there in Lucknow and their film city? For example, can I do an? Uh, somebody was asking me actually, not me. I would never do this. Can we do a, a film on, say, uh, the other side of the Babri Masjid demolition? How it was not the correct thing to do? Would that be allowed? That story could that get out? Or you know how farmers' agitation is not the right thing and should not be discussed? Or how Sushant Singh Rajput case was just a suicide? And nothing more. I'm just, I'm just saying, could we go with those subjects, and will we still get all the subsidies that we want, or will we be sent to the back of the line? We'll find out with our experts on cock and bull. But before that, let's go into a break. What are some of the radical changes that are now shaping our workspace? With physical distancing and heightened safety protocols being the norm. Will technology finally make its large-scale entry to the workspace? Will design as we know it change for the long term? Is it possible for the Indian commercial real estate space to adopt a 360-degree approach to sustainability? Join our hosts at the Future of Space podcast by RMC as we deliberate with industry leaders, analysts, and bright young minds on the way forward for the workspace given the new COVID normal. Tune in to the IVM Podcasts app. Or wherever you stream your favorite podcasts, Mr. Thakkar is here for a couple of weeks more before he becomes a, a foreign national. Amit Doshi <laughs> looking very happy uh, in the last couple of weeks. I wonder why. It might be female related. <laughs> And uh, Akash Mehta, the great, is back Hi. from Alibag, healthy, wealthy, and wise. Akashji, bully. Alibag is nice, but it's it's small. By the way, I went to Alibag on Cyrus's. Uh, uh, By the way, you sounded like my first girlfriend when you said it's small, huh? I, I do remember that. <laughs> oh, very painful relationship for her. What do you mean by small? Geographically small. So okay, so what happened is I I booked an Airbnb, hmm. and which was the best decision because it was like all right outside of it there was like a couple of practice pitches, so you could just hear. Oh, hey, wow. Yeah, so you could just hear good old fashioned like just bat on ball throughout the day, which was very nice. But other than that, I didn't. I went to that that Samant or something to have food. Correct, Samant. Yeah, and then that was it. What else do you do? No, so that's why people go there who are in love and want to make love and do those kind of things. If you want to just hang out, you can't really go bowling. And I mean, I understand that your limited uh, uh, sort of options are there, but it's very good for people to bond. So anybody who is in a re- proper relationship or a family who wants to spend time together is great. Or a political party who needs to, you know, up its game like Congress. Maybe they can all go there, hang out. Antule is from there, by the way. One-time chief minister, mm. very much Ali Bag. Essential point is that is for people who need to be put together and like you know forced to yeah. be together to not kind for, of develop the relationship. Yeah, not for lonely bachelors who have nothing to do. <laughs> it's not for uh, single men who need the city life. It's really oh, not okay. city life. I don't know why people think it is. No, no, it, it, it was just like I was. You actually, went with a girlfriend, right? No, no, I went alone. You went uh, firstly. Now that's creepy and sounds <laughs> okay. All of us now like forget Ali Bag. The problem is you, bro. You took a BNB, Airbnb. You went to play on a practice uh, pitch, a game which involves twenty-two people, and you played that alone. What the hell are you I talking mean, about? Arey, yar, I just wanted. A, so I've made this new resolution where I'm going to take two days off. Okay. Okay. Uh, like okay, so one week I'll take two, three days off, and then the week after that, a week, leave it. I will take the so week. Pandra din mein two three days offer comes to for peace of mind. So every fifteen days I'll take either three four days or five five six days off. But yeah, for peace of mind. So 
Like after that last week, most of the week I was at the farm only. But that you already have. So why would you go to Alibaba? It's almost same thing. I just wanted a different location. Of, oh. A change of scenery, dude. But on the way back, there was a gorgeous uh, nursery. Man, it was so beautiful. Plant nursery. Know, yeah, it was like a nursery come restaurant, <laughs> and it was huge, dude. Wow, and so you're one of those men, huh? The metros. Because every time my wife stops at the damn plant nursery, I have a fit. I, I don't know. I don't want to be disrespectful. I love animals, but I hate plants. I think that's why I'm not vegetarian. I just can't bear them. No, what do you do with a plant? You look at the plant and the people around you. It's like with babies. People just look at plants and have these orgasms. And I look at a plant. It's a stupid green thing going nowhere in life. Stands there. I, mean, I, I don't get. I don't get a connection with plants. I'm sorry. Oh, Agash, plants are the best uh, living things on the planet. You, because they don't talk, and you can do all the talking. No, <laughs> they're the most stable. Like they don't need a lot to get going. They're solar powered for the most part. I see. For yeah. me, the only good thing is that our dogs get to urinate in peace. <laughs> Until somebody says, "Don't pee on my plant." Yeah, That's we so went weird. with two friends' ka dogs to the farm, and the the dogs burned through all my grass, dude. Did you know dog pee kills grass? It's uh, acidic. No? Even ours is actually. By the way, even I like to pee on the outdoors. Huh? Don't tell the government. <laughs> I don't care what Akshay Kumar has done for building toilets. I say you find an open road as an Indian male, let it go out. Just have a little. Where you pee? The roadside in the city. No, city man, city man, will not do it. You always like, pee in other people's cities. I mean, at night. <laughs> I, I have a lovely story. I'll quickly segue before we start proper conversation. And that is Abhijit the singer. Who is Koi aise ki dagao? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raju Banke gentleman. He so is. He uh, he's an interesting guy these days. Politically, he had no idea about all that. Then <laughs> I think it was in the UP area only, Lucknow or something like that. So on the highways or whatever kacha roads, we stopped to pee. Let's not say we were drinking, but it's possible we were. I can't remember properly. Now they have a seniority thing in the music line, like in most lines. So Abhijit would like you know he got out, removed little Abhijit, Shan removed little Shan, I removed little Cyrus, and we started peeing. While peeing. He starts telling Shan, Shan, who are they? And he hits some Kishore Kumar song, and he starts singing it. You know, he just, just, just in the middle. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll go, they'll, and he's asking him to harmonize. <laughs> he's looking, at him, holding his little Shan, and trying to find the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is he wanted to sing the whole song. Up he ended, but the song didn't end. So yeah. nobody, you know, because he's a senior guy, Shan was just frozen and was like, okay, yeah, so <laughs> yeah. and they sang the whole song, and I was holding my little Willie there, waiting for the concert to end. <laughs> he's a funny man. He's really eccentric. Uh, that was a waste of time. Uh, sorry that we begin with, but now we have solid news on this show because yeah. things are happening. Yeah. Vaccines are happening. Uh, the pharma agitation, I think, is now going to blow up uh, a little bit in the government's face. Uh, at the moment, things are not being uh, well. Things aren't looking good from for either side. Yeah. And Akash Mehta will tell you about how to survive five days of uh, being alone in the desert. So Akash, as a this... farmer, what is your thought around this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, right. That's, I think, very well put. Uh, so, my actually, my mother is the farmer. I only help out. Okay. Uh, and and you we only are... deal in pot. <laughs> Wait, <that>? what? <laughs> Don't project your different things on me, okay? Did I hear you growing marijuana or is that just a figment of my imagination? No, no, it's all your imagination. I was just saying that I'm, uh, I'm helping out. But uh, what stake do I have in this, dude? Listen to the people that need to be heard. I don't think either side is as well informed as it should be. But that's always going to be the scene when you have so much fake news floating around. Yeah, but uh, if you leave the policy aside, the fact of the matter that the... People have gathered at the Delhi borders in this cold, old people, young people. I mean, they've reached a point of desperation. It can't be that they're, you know, when people do that, it's obvious that they're really hurt and upset. I mean, at least that much is completely true. Then oh, you look absolutely. at it from the point of view of uh, the government has done what it can. It's trying to level the playing field. It's trying to help out the small farmer. At least that's the idea. And so you can hear from both sides. But Amit Doshi is a balanced man. He always gives a balanced view without any emotion, which I like. Mr. Doshi, we yes. vaguely talked about it last time. We did, uh, we did talk about it. And I, I mean, like my position kind of more or less is the same as that, what we spoke, right? I've looked into it more. I've read a more, lot more about it. The basic policy prescription is not a bad one. But as always, the manner of implementation is horrendous, right? So to plug a show on our network, Maru Kinayat did a episode on this on The Note, right? And uh, she made some really interesting points about this, right? I mean, like... Uh, that why was there no conversation had beforehand? Because now what's happening is that all these 60 years of fear that we have placed into farmers' minds about how corporations are evil and they are going to essentially, you know, exploit them and all of that is what's coming to roost over here, right? 
uh, there was a very interesting opinion piece in uh, Hindustan Times about the comparison of milk versus food farming, right? Mm-hmm. Milk is also farming. It's also agriculture, right? But mm-hmm. milk does not have an MSP. And milk is a very thriving industry because they've figured out cooperatives and stuff like that. And that is probably the way for farmers. But the thing is that that education needs to be put across. People need to be told about that kind of thing, right? Without that, it you know... So you're I mean, saying like, the lack of... Uh... Knowledge on the issue is hurting the farmer. I think lack of communication from the government, because again, farmers have real issues with this as well, right? It's not that, you know, it's the government has made a 100% good law. But, uh, you know, our government has this tendency, stroke of midnight, we will do this, hmm. right? And that's what happened over here as well, right? No consultation, no discussion, you, no nothing. It's a demonetization, deja vu kind of thing. It's a demonetization thing. Yeah, it I is a yeah, uh, lockdown thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. also like the, the way it was passed, no? Like it felt like parliamentary procedure was not followed in spirit. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you mean? In the sense that they muted the channel when it was going on. They, You know what I mean? It was passed in a rush. They didn't really listen to everybody. It was voice vote, no? I mean, like, uh, so that is one problem right off the bat, which I don't understand how we are still dealing with this nonsense, Right. Why, why are we having voice votes? That's what Because some of the parliamentarians are very old and to put up their hand or actually write or type something will, you know, can hurt you. <laughs> Fair so enough. It makes but, sense. But the, they never, that, their ability to abuse, shout and scream is always there. But see, with the voice vote, nobody's on the record. What do you mean nobody's on the record? They've recorded their voice votes. Yeah, but, but it's... Ah, a voice vote is who makes more noise, right? Essentially. Oh, it's a collective voice vote. Yeah. Oh, then we'll win every time. We should join. Baba, it's not them. like it's not like uh, all those in favor say I I won. You know, the, the everybody had to say yes or no, and like you know, based on that, I couldn't believe. It. And this is not so the first time we've had. When you give a prospect. ticket to someone, you one of the things you have to see is uh, morally upright, uh, you know, Young great capacity. popularity, but superb voice. Yeah. Super voice, so powerful, you know, sonorous yeah. baritone. When you go, ha! Sorry, I hope that was too loud. Get some <laughs> opera singers. <Sorry. laughs> yeah. But another issue, another issue that they're facing, another criticism that the government is facing is that uh, they are asking the farmers are basically asking them, "Okay, who did you like, ask? Who did yeah. you consult? Exactly. Yeah. Was there a union, the farmer union that approached you? <laughs> this, was there a farmer union that approached you?" Delivery. Uh, if you take it away from farming also, if you look at any uh, podcasting, for example, if people yeah. make laws in podcasting with, without involving the Amits and those kind of people, it makes no sense. You can't just come from outside, enter right. a, an industry and just lord over it. It has to come from inside with the help of an organized uh, government, which uh, supposedly runs the whole well, thing. I mean, like there are conversations around this right now happening, right? About OTTs being uh, pushed, censored. Uh, uh, not censored. I mean, like still to decide what to happen, right? But bringing OTTs under the INB kind of uh, gambit, if you will, right? Mm-hmm. And again, you know, the, the thing is that the consultations in those contexts happened with the non-OTT television channels. They're like, why are they allowed to do stuff that we're not allowed to do? So lobbying happened from one side, consultation did not happen with the other side, and then bang, we have this issue. But looking back, as we mentioned the last time, farming issues go back to independence, literally. Uh, it's not about Congress or BJP or anybody else. It seems a lot of mooboli work, a lot of spirit. The spirit seems to be right. The attitude seems to be right, but the implementation is always off. And uh, at the end of the day, the farming community seems very aggressive and very upset and very frustrated, which is yeah. quite sad if you look back 67, 70 years. I think it's, uh, it also reflects on our education policy over the last 60, 70 years. We never really bothered. India never had a solid strategy on what we were going to do to educate all the people. We just said, Ki create karo, kaise bhi karke, manual labor to manual labor. That's why stuff like uh, Narega comes out. No? And Narega, no. I mean, it's, it's basically, there's no acknowledgement of the base level problem so, only. We tried to privatize all education and look at what it gets you, you know. To play devil's advocate, and I will never call the government devil for a second. Is it possible that the agrarian community has not educated itself enough also? There is a part of that. Garibi is a very vicious cycle, man. It's a very vicious cycle. And when one generation and the second, and then when you have, you know, the land laws and interstate laws, which are making people's land get even more and more bifurcated, then they didn't allow companies early also. There was not enough regulation. Then they did over-regulation. So, I mean, this, all of these are huge. No, and I think that's why that's a big part of the problem, right? I mean, like the fact is that we mythologize farming to a great degree in this country, right? 
and is it appropriate to mythologize to that extent right and that's a, that, that's it's a good question done. to ask right i mean it's already done huh? it's glamorized no. mythologized whatever you romanticize right. uh, hindi music uh, you know songs plays folk heroes all that is there rightly or wrongly is not another thing but it's already there we can't no, change no, that i'm not saying that you don't uh, talk about the profession or anything like that right but what we've done is we found virtue in poverty we found virtue in the fact yeah. that small farmers exist right that's perverse and yeah, that is that's <laughs> just when you think about it you know it's like don't feel bad you're poor because you're great yeah. you're the one who's stealing the land you're great you great are the, you oh, are okay. the son of the soil right i mean like son you know that yeah you know i mean like it's a terrible attitude it allows our politicians to escape real responsibility for the fact that what you want is you want upward mobility you want social mobility you want the ability of people to move across different areas of the country the economy right i mean like so again i i'm not a big fan of china generally but how did china get so many people out of poverty they open these big fucking factories they open these huge secs over here you open an sec and bloody nobody can get a factory in there because or they just stop the excessive people well that's the reason why i'm not such a big fan of china's <laughs> methodology <laughs> generally right i completely agree with amit on this like you know there's no there's no strategy it's just like everybody so and that's one thing where see they, you know what china has done is reflective of one thing that chinese government has as an advantage they're not worried about coming back into power next time because there's nobody else right you know yahan pe everybody is so busy trying to take care of that chair that they are they are immobile you know to actually make a difference not to say that uh, you know we need an authoritarian government or that we need a fascist one or a, a dictator but i think the, the best way to look at this akash is from your own perspective as a comedian for example your industry as an artist or whatever if they start regulating in the hopes of making the smaller comedians let's say like uh, Raju Srivastava or Veer Das or whatever who are struggling they should try to regulate it so that they get more work or it's easier for them or their the next generation to come through what would you do like what do you think you know, you know, would you be okay sorry, sorry i'll i'll just make a point here before akash starts right what you said is actually super fucking true in its own way though right if you start regulating comedy what will wind up happening is that Raju Srivastava and Veer Das will get more work Yeah. That's exactly what will happen if you start Correct. regulating comedy in this. So, so you then create a, like a have and have not situation in the in the guild yeah. that you're you're trying to you know operate yeah. because yeah. obviously while your whole idea the paradox of the idea will come to your whole idea is to balance people out but the uh, certain people who swim to the top will be able to control the whole thing and then right. so so maybe we should regulate <laughs> just leave it free. But it's, it doesn't work like that, no. Because when you leave it free, then there are larger corporations and other people that are like vultures, you know, that will come and just drain out like what's happening in the West. Say, for example, in America, where all these big, big companies like Monsanto and you know all the other companies that are acquiring the final product, they are really screwing over the farmers, and the farmers barely have any control. The government gives so much subsidy to farmers in America. Subsidy is given here as well. I know, but like, so what I'm trying to say is that just giving it away and hoping that privatization solves the problem does not work either. So I, I think well-regulated matters, right? I mean, like, well, you want to make sure that for anybody who says that there should be no regulation, I think that's moronic and that's foolish, right? But at ah, the same Silas, time, you call you a moron. No, I've been called much worse. This is a step up here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but a certain degree of regulation, right? Regulation to ensure uh, a basic. facts right ensure fairness of play and ensure contract enforceability you know these kind of those are things fairness i mean i don't think that's ever going to happen but what they can do is give everybody a chance you but, have to create uh, certain perimeters so everybody has a chance to sell their product but i sell their know, product in the way they probably would be happy to sell their product not the way you're telling them as in you go to x market alone and sell to only those many people at this much time and you have to uh, you know uh, uh, use these vendors and nobody else So when I talk about fairness, I don't mean fairness. I don't mean equality of outcome, right? I don't mean that everybody should make the same amount of money. What I mean by fairness is that if you're somebody who has land and you want to buy a certain amount of seed, you should have access to a market to buy that seed. If you want to buy a different kind of seed, you should have access to a market to buy that kind of seed, right? By fairness, what I'm meaning is that a certain amount of ensuring that cartelization does not occur. right because otherwise that will become an issue that occurs in farming right that the only people who are able to get these high quality wheat seeds are only people who are part of this group and not that right and so i mean like by fairness what i'm trying to say is open access to a market right yeah, whether that is on the supply side better. whether that's on the demand side okay now with fairness to our listener i think we need to move away from this topic because we are becoming very invested in it and it's becoming so serious and painful that they'll finally realize that we are not farmers yeah. only that kind of person could be so interested it's that's typically true. indian thing Right, also, so we don't know all that much about what we're talking about right now, so have, it's probably for the have, best. No idea, on. no idea. So, as Amit catches his back, an old Indian custom. <laughs> let's uh, by farmers and non-farmers. <laughs> let's move to the next topic. But before that, let's go into a break. Z. 
जिंदगी डायरीज के पन्नों में कुछ पुरानी यादें समुन्दर किनारे झूमते दरख्त जवान दिल की धड़कने और अनजान मुलाकातें हैं तो आइए खोलिए मेरे साथ जिंदगी डायरी के पन्ने और साथ ही एक साथ खुलकर जीते हैं जिंदगी आप सुन सकते हैं जिंदगी डायरीज आई वी एम पॉडकास्ट ऐप या वेबसाइट पर या जहां कहीं से भी आप अपने पॉडकास्ट सुनते हो ओके वेलकम बैक वी गॉट द सेम पैनल अनफॉर्चुनेटली बट लॉट्स मोर टॉक अबाउट मिस्टर सिल्वरी All right. Uh, this is a very funny topic that uh, a few we have a few funny topics this week. This one comes in from Hungary. It says uh, anti-gay Hungarian politician uh, Joseph Sajer. Name is not important. But so anti-gay Hungarian politician resigns after being caught attending a 25-man gay orgy in Hungary. Is this always the case? Almost always the case that people Quite who often. hate yeah. the, the concept or actually latently the concept. It's like. Uh, this is i am not yeah, surprised yeah. i find the guys who are uncomfortable with homosexuality growing up and all many of them tended to be uncomfortable with their own sexuality yeah it's, what's it's even funnier uh, yeah yeah <laughs> what's even funnier is he was caught uh, jumping out of the window and like kind of injuring himself <laughs> and then the police caught him outside the venue trying and, to flee from the venue and, but what did they hold he was in an orgy naked i'm saying he jumps out the cop comes you yeah I that's mean, what they didn't say at what in what state of undress yeah, he, yeah. he jumped out but they got caught for not the orgy but oh, for yeah, yeah, violating covid norms covid norms yeah covid <laughs> norms the orgy is fine orgy is not the problem <laughs> i love hungary yeah. i have the same beliefs you know you should never prosecute people for sex uh, consensual sex i think it happened in sweden no no this is he just said it up as hungary and all your things no, no, the guy no. is hungarian he is the hungarian uh, representative to the european oh but he got uh, Oh, oh, yeah. So Sweden has finally decided to take COVID seriously. Finally, yes. And who they yeah. catch the foreigner? Xenophobia, zinda baad. No, but uh, you know that 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 was such a crazy uh, this right that basically Sweden was like, "Fuck it, we'll do herd immunity," and they just kind of they, they didn't shut until last week anything at all. But they did well initially. Well, initially they did okayish, right? But now yeah. they are at a point where their death rate is like twelve, fourteen, fifteen times neighboring countries. Oh, wow yeah well uh, i've always said after abba and beyond borg it's you know it's been downhill for sweden <laughs> i've always i've had my you know had my doubts about okay. this whole thing also like a, uh, the more developed a country na the immunity is also little i think it's it definitely so your your kamzori is uh, correlated to how well you've done the weaker you are the more civilized and sophisticated you are it's like i that. i feel like the best solution here is to just do what india is doing and just people should stop getting tested only it's simple if you don't get tested then there are no case nobody has covid cases. if there are no new cases then the way is uh, flatten and for example if you're doing a farmers agitation with lakhs of people in a one area for example i mean that's one way for herd immunity one way or the other yeah mm. Yeah, actually, you're right, man. I mean, I didn't hear. Uh, that's the concern as well, right? I mean, like these kinds of big this. You're uh, not letting people in stadiums. Agitations are much worse. Yeah. The agitations, you're spending hours and hours together. There's no way you're not, you know. I mean, come on, do the maths. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Mm. An, over a period of time, I mean, the agitation is here to stay. I think it'll out outlive COVID. It's going to go on and on. Uh, so I, I was reading a trail of like you know infections in White House uh, and Donald Trump campaign staff, right? Hmm. Uh, Mr. Giuliani just got Giuliani, it, right? yes. Uh, yeah. But I was reading like you know they were they were talking about like just the number of people that have had it who have been around those people because they continue to do these outdoor events there or not even sorry indoor events these big events constantly and I'm just like man how no but uh, Amit we have it on record that Rudy Giuliani self inflicted the COVID. because he decided yeah. that he, he couldn't take uh, Donald Trump's uh, legal uh, issues anymore and so he decided to <laughs> make sure he got the covid to get off the damn team self sabotage i think it's the right thing to do and i respect him a lot for that um you in the know, meantime you brought yeah. up donald trump he's going in for five executions is it in the last 10 days uh, this is a guy a world record only matched by kim jong un guy is a uh, mentor guy is in what is he doing wait what all He's federal saying, as i exit office i want to leave my mark so all these fast forwarding as many executions as he can to become if if all of them yeah, happen he'll be the number one uh, executor but he's also pardoning people States. is he not he's no, also pardoning people doing, he's on both sides he's on both so sides no, but you don't uh, hello bro silvery what I, what is, what law have you come up with <laughs> 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 pardon a guy can still kill a guy right? that's lovely that's taking us back a thousand years bro, no, that's beautiful saying, like don't attack trump 
शक्ति मिल्स केस So how do you yeah. will you kill them all? Yeah. So then it's so then it stops being rare. That's and ah! when a horrific crime is no longer rare. Do you still apply the law? This is a perverse the truth that you un un unheralded. A so perverse truth. He's right, Amit. Yes, yeah, that's an interesting question, right? And again, no answer. Rare to the rare is a formulation which does permit Akash's well, the interpretation. So if you look at right? Ajmal Kasab, twenty six eleven, rare to the rare. because uh, god forbid that can ever happen but uh, rape happening and rape leading to death happening is far more an occurrence i mean we just had that whole uh, case that ornob dismissed or the court of ornob dismissed immediately in yeah. bihar so which is a highlighted ones there are plenty more as well which don't get highlighted so much very good point why did you become a lawyer akash comedy is lost would have been uh, <laughs> the legal fraternity is gain here <laughs> Plus, you could have been funny, Milord. We'll start with three men in a bar, and now I'll talk about the rape picture. <laughs> so, what has started happening in the US because of uh, this is the pardon season, as they're saying, is that uh, people are started campaigning for pardons. So, for yeah. instance, the person who is the the Tiger King guy, uh, if you guys saw the documentary, yeah. the Tiger yeah, King, yeah, yeah. the Joe Exotic guy, he his team has been majorly campaigning. and is looking like he might just get the pardon because he knows how to do it he has been staying at one of trump's hotels because he knows that <laughs> trump won't waste uh, time on people who aren't like giving him money already so he's doing all that his, his campaign is going so all out so he's trump at Basically. 100 dollars a day <laughs> yeah or whatever what maybe he's over paying for the room or something no, but so it's scary. Just, he's going around like i read an article in the morning that he's going around and telling his advisors you take a pardon and you take a pardon just in case they <laughs> just in case they uh, so uh, what, what he's trying to promote is this idea that biden is going to go after people and so he's pardoning them in anticipation of those kinds of things and the article i was reading was like the advisor was like dude i don't want a fucking pardon right why should i take a pardon because by taking a pardon i'm saying i did something wrong i did nothing wrong yeah. Yeah. But, but 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 do you think biden will waste time going after him because that i don't think so i don't think so i, 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 
that that's what trump does uh, basically the i i seriously don't... trump is showing empathy reverse empathy where he's putting uh, biden in his shoes yeah. right then I, if I, biden becomes the president how will he behave like i would have behaved so i, I don't even empathy. think any other republican president besides donald trump would have gone after political enemies the way that this guy has right so even mitt romney would never have done it george w bush would never have done it not people who i'm a big fan of but none of them would have done this kind of nonsense either. and they are inheriting a pandemic for god's sake they're inheriting a a, a world which has to heal economically more than anything else so i mean you can't waste them uh, with petty grudges you'll just look stupid as a statesman yeah well i mean, i think the boat on how do we know Trump this when i don't even state. run the building i mean how do we know this and they don't know this what the, what's going on he doesn't care yeah. such a note what i find horrifying about this because i'm just learning about this as you brought it up on the podcast is ki ha huh. he's killing people you know what i mean like yeah He's deciding whether somebody dies, dude. Like that's a you can't just you know what I mean. Like that's no, a no, Akash. Decision. He's deciding that, and also he's deciding that nothing to do with the case. It's more to do with his own personal ego thing. Hey, I'm you know, getting out of. I'm losing office, so then I need to do this before. Yeah, it's unrelated. It's not the specifics of that case that matters at all. It's just that I want to spank a few people. I don't know. That's horrifying. Yeah, no, it shows really no sensitivity whatsoever. there there are people a few people i think in the world who have absolutely no sensitivity uh, megalomaniacs uh, on television or uh, people who run third world countries to the ground i mean god don't start us off you guys think he maintains his base for the next 4 years and then 100%. comes back 100% he maintains it you think he continues doing rallies and all that 100%. he's still a big star I and mean, he's got so many votes i mean 70 73 million votes And and do the Republicans have a replacement? It's like the Congress here in India; they don't have anything uh, after the Gandhi family. Really, nothing is really lined up now. No, well, no, there are some people there. I mean, like it's not that the Republican Party doesn't, but the problem is that so Trump who, is uh, who could who who would have that luster, the telegenic so, personality, so, the one who bring in the numbers, uh, the, the whole right wing cadre so, that he sort of uh, groomed himself. You know, they so graduated under there, him. There are a couple of people. There, there's uh, Matt Gates from Florida. It gives you hope, Amit. Uh, no, no, no. These guys are evil. These guys should. I mean, like seriously, I hate these people, right? Yeah. But these are people who could take over what he's doing, right? Uh, Matt Gaetz, Jim Jordan from Ohio, Kevin McCarthy from California. Uh, these are all people who are essentially Trumpists, right? Same kind of uh, thinking, right? It, there, there's some really interesting stuff I've been reading about, like you know what causes people to vote for Trump, right? And it's not policy; it's attitude. Nobody right. gives a, they they don't care about his policies at all. The people who are voting for him, they just like the fact that let's own the libs, right? As they say, that's their entire. Uh, But isn't that becoming more now uh, frequent across the world? The uh, cult of personality and the the person and nothing more. It, well, I don't know, right? I mean, like I I I think that Joe Biden's not exactly a cult of personality type, right? I mean, like so there are definitely enough people out there who are not thinking that in the U.S. In India, we need to. We'll see what happens in 2024, right? Wow, does the culture? I want Akash to Akash to stand. Akash, I want you to stand. The way you brought out that rare is rare case. It means you have a very erudite and alert mind. I see. Uh, it must not be wasted on comedy. What is comedy going to do? Forty people sitting in a theater clapping. They're already drunk. You can just come and say dick, dick, cock, cock, cunt, cunt, whatever. But, five minutes and they laugh at all the bad but, words. But describing can, politics. politics. But you can yeah. influence more with comedy <laughs> than by being a lawyer. So I think uh, cast. I don't want to. Oh, but, touchy, yeah, touchy, touchy, touchy. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I know, I know. Well, correct. Great work. But, but you can if you wanted to. <laughs> no, I want to write. You're missing the entire point. I have made peace with just being writing jokes. It's okay. It's the easiest achievable goal in life. It keeps me happy in twenty four seven. And everything and else, you can, it's yes, therapeutic. You can you can rant and you know take it out of your system also a little bit. Then you can't yeah. uh, really do anything. It's it's a way to start. We never yeah, that one. I'm not. Yeah. I'm a non confrontational person. So jo- comedy is the best, dude. I don't have to. Uh, you know, I as it is, don't have actual experiences. I just have conversations that could have happened in my head. So it's perfect. I'm similar to that. I'm a confrontational person for five seconds. Then I want to run. <laughs> so I've started so many fights and then run away. It's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> Silvery. Let's yeah. move on to another topic. Okay, sure. This one again is quite uh, quite amazing. Uh, Silvery, before you do that, you might notice yeah. I'm distracted. My head keeps going right. Doesn't yeah. mean that I'm you know favoring the ruling party. It <laughs> just means that the match is on and the TV is oh, on okay. the right. That, that's that's what I have also a little bit. Uh, please don't mind, huh? Yeah, but don't mind, Akash. We'll do it like simultaneously, okay. like synchronized yeah, that- swimming. That's fine, guys. 
That's so, fine. I'm watching a movie on the side. Oh, hope you don't mind. Super. Amit, what the hell? Are you masturbating at least? Please tell me you're, you're multitasking. <laughs> it's just that we need 35 from uh, two overs. 36 yeah, from two Yeah, it's a bit tight, yeah. Over. You have to do yeah, the okay. podcast now, no? Really. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, we're not Can't... the ones shooting a movie, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, please understand that when you're shooting a movie, the actor is the biggest, not only the biggest shoot, but the only guy who does nothing. So I can't even suggest anything to anybody because all we do is wait, 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 sitting yeah. on the set. Uh, sorry for another day. Let's let's go to the next okay. topic. Uh, this one comes out from New York, uh, New York City. Uh, it's a woman, a 102-year-old woman who was born yeah. during the Spanish flu and has survived cancer during her life, has yeah. now survived COVID twice. So that's twice. the thing that screwed me, right? How did she get it twice? I thought that once oh, you, you, you don't no, get no, it this again. Is, this has been so happening for a while. Mohit has got it twice. Getting reinfected all the time. Yeah, yeah. Just to cut for a second, Mohit, our producer on our TV show, has got it twice in 38 days. Yeah. Has so he got it either one test twice? was wrong because it was asymptomatic. So twice he had to go out and we had to retest. I've tested seven times, by the way, in the last two months. Okay. Uh, so he had to. We all we all had the same assumption that you cannot get it for six months. Uh, very rare, rarest of the rare, to quote Akash. But apparently you can. Interesting. I uh, thought that you couldn't get it a second time if you had the antibody. So, because otherwise, how will a virus, what this woman a, went through? Vaccination work. Asymptomatic both times. Huh? Yeah. No fever, nothing. Huh? This woman had a uh, fever for the maximum huh? she had was the fever. The second time she got COVID, she had fever for about ten days. Uh, but that's it. That's all that happened. She didn't have anything else. It's but not a flare-up. You're saying that she got infected twice. Infected twice. Yeah, infected twice. She, it's not that it was there in the system and it flared up. It's she got infected twice. That's, how can a vaccine work then? No, because then they've done a negative test, no? They've done a negative test in between, right? But that could yeah. be a false test. There's a possibility uh, of that being false. No, There's no. a possibility of it staying inside your body and have planning up later. But if it's if if you can get it twice, a vaccine, how can a vaccine This work? is the problem I'm having from March. The information is everywhere. Everybody thinks they've gleaned it correctly. But we keep realizing that we do know a little bit about everything, but we don't really have proper information. Yeah. And yeah. lots of the uh, stuff that we think was correct is incorrect. Yeah. I'm a little oh. worried. I think this whole thing is a sham. There is no COVID. This is the government of the world trying to clean up society, getting rid of people. Uh, also, uh, didn't Pfizer come out and say that? Uh, nobody said a word when you said that, right? Did he not react to that at all? But you realize it's like that eight-year-old kid who's very uh, precocious and you know boisterous, and nobody so, wants to pay attention. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had oh, a friend come shit. over home a couple of days ago. What happened? I'm sorry. Please come. Oh shit! Sorry. Please. Sorry, Amit. We are not okay. reacting to Virat Kohli getting out. That wouldn't upset us. That, that, of course not. Of Let's course. hear your story. Your story will cheer us up. <laughs> Losing his wicket. Yeah. So, uh, uh, my story has to do with uh, somebody who I know who works at uh, Tesla. And uh, when he was, uh, they were basically we were just talking about this, right? And we're talking about COVID and stuff like that because what else do you talk about when you meet these days? And uh, no, that's that's really grim. Really? Yeah. I mean, in the old days, you discuss sports, you know, girls. I don't know. <laughs> hey, man, how's COVID? Oh, how's cancer? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're talking about like, you know, how everybody in Tesla is reacting to Elon Musk's. There is no such thing as COVID initially. Now, yeah, then yeah. it became this and that, right? Yeah. And it was just like, yeah, everybody just nods. Well, what's, what's the reaction? Everybody just nods. Yeah. So there is what a person is. If you remember Pink yeah. Panther, the original version, the guy's absolutely crazy. You just have to, you know, just get on with it. All right. Fine. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but I get that a lot at home. In any case, I see, I think I see some real pearls of wisdom and no reaction. Nobody says anything. <laughs> they just ignore you. You think a Churchill giving a speech? Ignored. You know, Akash had that moment about rarest of the rare. If he said it in my house, he'd be like, oh, just move from the TV I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I read something about Pfizer uh, saying that uh, we'll be releasing the vaccine, but we won't be making our research public uh, for like a while. Uh, they shouldn't. There'll be too many loopholes. No, no but, I, but a lot of the underlying research is well known. And it's it, already it, well known. it has been shared. Yeah, because they did it already for SARS and all. No, no this is the research is not the problem. The problem is perspective is not going to happen. As a student of anabolics and SARMs and all that, I understand this a little bit. You need history. History only comes with time. Time will only happen with time. So while we can release it, the fact of the matter is we won't have that perspective to look back and say, look, now for sure we know that over 10 years this is what's happened. Hence, we can put it in the market. There, there is definitely a bit of a risk. Well, but what uh, can we do? Putting a vaccine out in like 8, 9 months, 10 months. I mean, like it's insane. It's never happened. And then become, it became like a race. Like my dick is bigger than yours. Huh? Sputnik, of course, he announced it before COVID happened. We already <laughs> have. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> it was very scary, by the way, if you ask Yeah. Me. Yeah, but uh, anyway, I'm saying, will you guys take the vaccine? What's your call? Of course. 
Yeah, why wouldn't I? I think yeah. You would take it. Whatever, ninety nine percent, ninety two percent. Somebody I work with has taken the is part of one of the trials, okay. uh, and took it and uh, has been walking around and just chilling and going everywhere. No mask, no shits given. So no extra nipple or his uh, you know penis is now eighteen inches. But he's fine. Like oh. he's come into contact with people who had COVID. He was fine. Does contact he know? Contact us in without mask and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's so yeah, he's gotten cocky at this point. So has <laughs> he been doing regular tests? Then how would he know that he's negative? Yeah, of course he's getting. Nah, he's part of the program, no? Part of the program. But honestly, even if you're only asymptomatic after that, then your the danger to other people, but to yourself is solved. But he's, so getting getting tested, point, no? he's getting tested regularly. Yeah, 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 he is getting tested. But I'm saying that as long as you're not picking up that fever, fever is the key that huh. everyone agrees on. Yes. So I mean, you, you've not really got major. The other symptoms are all common. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, I don't think I want to take the poke here. I'm not a big fan. Really? Have, like, I mean, will, like, have you got other uh, vaccines done when you were a kid? Like, I but mean, they like, forced us. The parents are, you know, fascists. They no, don't but, tell you. They, Son, would you like cholera shot or let it go? They never do that. They well, just okay. take you, tell a doctor. Did you, uh, did you, uh, sorry, there were some which you have to take as, uh, like, you know, as a teenager as well. Did you ever take those? My parents were very perverse. They just wanted me to put things in my ass. So they would okay. tell me, Chalo, let's go. And off we go to the doctor. And <laughs> they did a Rahul Bo story. We, we I've to, heard uh, a few. I'd like to hear one more. <laughs> so we went to the show called Kathru Ki Khiladi in 2010 in Brazil. And we had to take the yellow shot vaccine on arrival. Um, and on arrival means as we enter the hotel, we're put in one room and this hot nurse straight out of one of those porn hubs, great golden moments comes with an elderly doctor. And then the ambassadors of three, we are, we are sent to her. She's behind a table and with a curtain or something and they do it. So when his turn came, uh, obviously people are a little shy or whatever, not very quick to remove pants or he said, hello. And he's, you know, he's always alert. He's a very like, you know, dynamic sort of personality. He removed the pant immediately and got into position. She didn't speak English. The good-looking nurse said, no, 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 no. She screamed and pointed to the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> she screamed like he was, like he was some pervert. He a guy come there, drops no. the pants and gets ready for a shot. You know, to show the lads. <laughs> yeah. That was a funny guy. Yeah. I love him, but he's hilarious. You see, I was like, okay, up to that. <laughs> yeah. Why do oh, we get to the story? Yeah, we want the vaccine. That's right. Yeah. So, should we go to the AMAs? It's been a long show. Uh, sure. So just one last tiny small story. This is kind of funny. This comes in from uh, uh, Vietnam. It's about uh, a husband basically lied to his wife. And the wife found out that the air purifier at home wasn't an air purifier at all. It was a PlayStation 5. <laughs> the husband told her that's, <laughs> the husband told her that's an air purifier. Yeah. My kind of guy. <laughs> and then she found I mean, out and told it. Hey, listen, this is being creative and innovative. Not so much as being insincere and devious. Yeah, I correct. don't mind this at all. Yeah, exactly. Because how do you survive? <laughs> exactly. I, I, as a married man, I, I think I'm the only married man here. Let me tell you honestly, you have to play the ball uh, to the limits that you can play the ball. You can't yeah. just go on the front foot every time and try and hit sixes and all that. <laughs> so you play a little leg and get away with it. Makes sense. Everybody's happy. He gets caught, of course. Then she thinks he's the worst kind of scheming, conniving guy. Fair enough. <laughs> but it's worth the punt, if you ask me. And I respect <laughs> it. I respect <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I think, uh, see... How he got caught is important because if you genuinely keep it in a room and turn it on and leave it, it sounds like an air purifier. It does. Okay. So I think, see, this is an execution mistake. What I feel is that he has given us a path for the future. Now, as people <laughs> who believe in mild domestic deceiving, I think it is a it is a good thing to learn from. Yeah, also, we will make sure we don't <laughs> keep it near the TV next time. No, but also, I think you have to think of this again. Time is the issue. Whatever you're doing, it can't have a permanent solution. Temporarily, you'll get away, but you'll look the percentage, the correlation to success will go as with the time. Maybe. He should have waited a week and then gone like, baby, you look like, I'm going to be a This is why. This is, you're right. You have so much to teach. You have so much to teach, Akash. Law. <laughs> How to please your wife. <laughs> Excellent. But this, Good this story is really scary for someone in Delhi though. <laughs> Whatever wife founds out, oh shit, that's a PlayStation. <laughs> I thought I'm living no. a good life <laughs> with air purifier. No, 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 I will ask you one last question. You went, you told us a story with a guy in Sweden, the diplomat from Hungary. Who wrote yeah. that to us? You just I pull out the story. It. Yeah, just okay, okay. Yeah. I thought somebody sent you the story. It's an amazing tale. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And what kind of person rifles through you know that kind of information? Hungarian <laughs> <Get this>, diplomat, <laughs> gay, caught in gay orgy, but caught for COVID coming. I mean, yeah. when levels of satisfaction on that one. So, AM. True. All right, AM. AM yeah. I mean, first.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's been an absolutely incredible week on the network. We had so many great guests, so many great episodes. Advertising is dead. We had Faye D'Souza on. It, Varun took a break for four weeks, but what a bang he's back with. Siddharth Deshmukh celebrates the 100th episode of The Traveling Professor. It is an amazing show, which I cannot say enough good things about. Please, please do listen to it. And a different Siddharth on the network, Siddharth Bhatia. He's just been like absolutely guest after guest, right? This week, Zoya Akhtar talking about Gully Boy. I couldn't imagine a more interesting conversation. Ragini Kumar is on two different episodes this week. She is on Cyrus Says and she is on Edges and Sledges, both in anticipation of her new show, Zindagi Diaries. Do check out her appearance on both of those shows and her new show as well. Tanvi and Shloka, the millennial athlete, had a phenomenal episode with Dinesh Karthik and Abhishek Nair. Absolutely riveting stuff, talking about mentorship in many different ways. Definitely do give that a listen. And finally, I have a request to all of you. We have our listener survey going out this week. Every year we send out a listener survey at the end of the year. We're doing it again this year. And we would really, really, really appreciate your help in letting us know a little bit more about yourself. Our advertisers are really keen to find out who is listening to us and more about them. Anything that you could do is kept anonymously and we would really appreciate your help in this. And to sweeten the pot just a little bit, we'll be giving a randomly selected group of participants in the survey some Rivium swag. Last year we gave out coffee mugs. What we're going to give out this year is still a surprise. So please do help us out. would really, really appreciate that. And with that, let me get you back to your show. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Board Brocher. I'm so bored, I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just just, just follow me. Uh, first one comes in from Mohinish Nair. He says, hey Cyrus, uh, one of the episodes you talked about the, the benefits of using half a toothbrush and a full toothbrush. Uh, that made me think of another question. As yeah. one hygiene freak to another, what is the right amount of toothpaste that one can use where it's not too minty and also just not too stingy also? Probably the most important question never asked on the show. That is this question. All right, first, uh, repeat the half toothpaste versus full toothpaste thing because I can't remember this. Okay. So oh, half toothbrush versus yeah. full toothbrush. What is? I didn't understand See, the question. The thing, I'm very confused. No, Alex, the, the half toothbrush I discovered is actually much better than the big toothbrush, which is very uh, you know it's a dexterous sort of uh, thing that you're going through, and you need to have that flexibility and uh, the small size actually helps. Size does matter. With that, I could reach all the corners, roofs, inside, outside. You know, it allowed me a lot more flexibility. It's like having a light bat versus a heavy bat in cricket, or a big yeah. pee pee or a small pee pee while urinating. So in this case, the reverse is true. Smaller is better. It allows you to go to places no man has gone before. And I, I just think it's underrated, that experience. People want these fancy long handles. But coming back to the toothpaste, huge issue. Yeah. You, too much toothpaste is really bad, bro. Because yeah. if the smell is in the bathroom, it's, it's everywhere you go. It's like, you know, why, why do you have to do that? Just use the right amount, which is just a touch. You don't need more than a touch as far as I'm concerned. And as our teeth are falling in any case, there's less work to be done. So let's yeah. just get that right. Why do we overcompensate? Oh, I must be smelling bad and put three inches worth of, you know, that red, horrific, uh, smelling, whatever, I won't take the brand's name because I'm doing something on Friday with a toothpaste brand. (laughs) But it's because of all the ads, no, exactly what you're saying. It's because of all the ads, they do that extra well-formed shape of the toothpaste. But you don't need that much. Only a mad person would do that much. This is a third world country. We don't have enough toothpaste for everyone. But you do need enough. Farmers agitating. Next, the toothpaste people will go berserk. We've got to stop this here. So I think just... Sorry, just use a little bit. No, sir, what, what I, I get that, but I think don't you need enough toothpaste to kind of generate a proper lather? It will. For sure. Yeah. You don't need much. A fingernail or less will give you as much lather as you want. You can hey, gargle no, after that. I don't think so. As somebody... Bro, bro, bro. I've had to, I have to top up my toothpaste. To, I, I've had to top up my toothpaste because it's not sufficient. No, you are you so, are exactly. definitely so, doing it wrong, Amit. Okay. Uh, Amit, where are you putting the toothpaste? Is it going in your mouth? Or somewhere else because if it goes in your mouth it'll work the ladder will happen where else yeah. you need like no, now, I, now no, I, one, I, no one's I, nodding I, at me anymore <laughs> huh? what the bloody nod? I want the nod <laughs> you know 28 years old and I personally still have to set a reminder to brush every day I hate it I hate it, it I hate so why it brushing? you don't have a partner when you have a partner brush you don't waste time till then you want me to save money or give me <laughs> oh. no, I'm, I'm just saying that if you're alone, why do you have to brush? Your breath smells Sorry. great to yourself. What? No, it, I love a little bit also. I take a bit, a little bit. <laughs> what do you like a split person? In the morning, I did this also. I did this in the morning. I did this like I put my hands in the air like I just didn't care 10 times. Oh, I thought like the Nirma ad. You do a detergent special. <laughs> do that again? What is that? 
<laughs> you haven't done it or PT exercise when you were a kid? No, no, of course I've done it. You yeah. just want to see me do it again. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> you, you, you just think, you just think that uh, if they're known as clappers, the members of the third gender, you know, if they if they use that kind of technique, they would get a lot more uh, support, I think, from the public. You know, these wilder movements. What the was the clapping. question again? When they come, how much the toothpaste? Experience. How much toothpaste is enough, basically? We tend to go from there to many different places. <laughs> yeah, you know it that, depends you're, on your you're mouth. You're yeah. responsible. <laughs> the so, way I do it is every morning I I brush twice, like in the same go. Once will be like a little more toothpaste, and once will be a little less. So I get like just two layers, you know, two layers. So you're, you're using, so you're using a lot of toothpaste, and you're even using more toothpaste than I'm using. No, when I say no, no, no. Again, it's a legal issue. He's using per square inch on that toothbrush. The second time, far less. Yeah, he finds it as rewarding an experience. But his insecurity yeah. from childhood makes yeah. him do the bigger one first, so that he Correct. doesn't feel yeah. bad. It's a <laughs> complex thing. It goes back to the mindset yeah. of the person. Why but, use so much toothpaste? Uh, I I respect the person who sent the who sent the question whose name is uh, Monish. 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 Monish has a great question. Long time listener from Philadelphia. Yeah. Like yeah, and Philadelphia uh, may may have the best sandwiches or whatever, but you know they have to buck up thing and things like that. And if you have a partner, these things really start you until you have someone sharing the bathroom. You guys don't have anyone sharing the bathroom, so as I know, you don't know what it's like. The moment you do that, because see, there's the after effect of the of the bulging toothpaste. It's all over the basin. Which Indian male will clean after you spit? After you spit, it's over. That's your end point. Now that's your exit from the cinema. You go poo and you go. So you know uh, that the red stuff will always be there. That happens only with the excess. If it's little, there's nothing there. I'm, it just I'm perfectly comfortable with rinsing out my face and after I'm done, dude. The way you describe the world, it sounds so sad, bro. I always thought of myself as a superhero, and that I have to be ready for battle at any point. So then, as a superhero, I can't waste too much time doing toothpaste because suddenly the bat light will go off, and I have to go and fight crime. Now, how will right. I fight crime? I have to gargle, then I have to clean this thing, remove that thing, and also my wife. You know, she throws out my toothbrushes if I have the remnants on it. I mean, those remnants of the gum, whatever you call it, the fluoride. I mean, it stays right through my childhood. I used to like that. It made my toothbrush look bigger. I just, I just like that effect. Okay. Wait, what? There's something I'm hearing some the really, yeah, I'm hearing disturbing stuff. Yeah, what? <laughs> you don't, sure you spit yeah. into the basin and you don't, no. you don't rinse the basin no. out after that. No. So you leave shit on your toothpaste. On the days, <laughs> I, I, in the shooting days, I pee in the bathroom, I shave, I brush all simultaneously. Okay, and shower. All of them in the, at the same time. I perfected, I can get in and out in about three and a half to four minutes. I think, oh, dude, you know, understand, most people are on Aisha's side now. Yeah, like almost also, everybody's on Aisha's side now. Like, dude, really like <laughs> just spend eight minutes less in the gym, dude. You'll get time to <laughs> so forget dowry. Now people, oh, Meher, the reverse. We must ask for separate bathrooms. I've been saying this from the beginning. It is the way of the future. Even for males who live together, not just sexual relations, whatever people who live together. I'm saying separate bathrooms is the key. Uh, yeah. You just can't agree, man. It's, it's just everybody's got their own mannerisms and habits. We should really do this, yeah. Okay, before like, you take I, the next question, just one second, I have to pee. Okay, cool. I knew it. Now, see, if he did what I... I have this other idea. Why can't I keep a big bottle near the bed? Because I pee three, four times <laughs> a night now. And why can't I be... So, she, of course, said no. Now, if I wasn't married, I don't have to ask anyone. Why do I have to get up, walk seven, eight, ten feet, open... Because it's fucking like, disgusting to keep a bottle of urine next to you. <laughs> I have a cap. I open my in it. I shut the cap. All there to wipe my hands in case of spillage. I go back to sleep. 30 seconds, Amit. 30 seconds. Visa, we Good. get out of bed, stand on your feet, walk all the way. Six so, steps. Right. Six oh, steps from your bed to the bathroom. 10 eight, steps to your step yeah. to the bathroom, man. Yeah, but you know, getting out of bed is when you're sleepy <laughs> and all that. Come on. <laughs> Just for a pee. Wait, aren't you afraid of uh, at night waking up thirsty and then, you know, reaching the, the pee? Taking the pee, yeah. I, I, don't, like, I don't really drink that has, water that in the night. Will, if, uh, that will eventually happen at some point. I, and I know that this happens to me at least once a month. I sleep with a bottle of water next to me where I'll knock the bottle of water down. Once a month yeah. it happens at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. You're right. I have, a, I have a small 200 ml bottle of water which I keep far away for emergency. I don't drink it. So you want to keep coffee. the pee bottle close and the water bottle far? Demand <laughs> supply, brother. Demand supply. The demand is that I have to urinate in a seven hour sleeping session at least three or four times I get up. It's, I have disturbed sleep all the time. Did someone Look, say pee bottle while I was in the podcast? Yeah, yeah. You, you can guys get to the podcast about without peeing. So this is my uh, my uh, help to society in general. But Disgusting. Not just so then Cyrus, just wear a catheter, no? Just wear a catheter. 
no no that all sounds invasive yaar no, no, i don't want to do all that but a pee bottle <laughs> next to your bed yeah you can do it wait on the hygiene of your room can i can i be absolutely <laughs> frank and not to be sexist or you know uh, what what is the word uh, it's too uh, late know, Woman hating or what? I even thought you think it's possible to request the wife that can she hold the bottle? We always feel that it's much tougher to hold the bottle. We have done it while drinking in a car once, and it's not as easy as you think. It's much easier if you can use both hands and concentrate. Someone else is holding the bottle. Uh... <laughs> But I didn't have the guts to ask her because the bottle would be on my head. I'm a metal man. I don't think she would have approved here. I didn't marry correct. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, you you laugh now I when you have the peeing issues. These issues you realize for the comfort of yourself that you this is not the most impractical thing to to do. Mm-hmm. Akash went to pee once in a one-hour podcast. Imagine what will happen to him at the age forty-eight, twenty years from now. Three, four times, go to jail. Be in the same place. What will happen? Catheter. Get up, Catheter. walk five steps, go to the bathroom, come back, walk five steps back to the bed, go to bed. What a bore, like, man! You, This you cardio. Like, I'm because... anti-cardio. I never like cardio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh boy. Next question. Are you still taking? Yeah, last yeah, question. Let's do the last question. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this one. Uh, comes in from uh, Yogesh Kashalkar. He says, uh, "Hi, Amit, Silvery, Cyrus, and guest. Uh, this is Yogi fr- here from Dubai. Yogesh from Dubai. Uh, heard your latest Cock and Bull episode, and there was a mention of the number of minutes and hours heard uh, heard of Cyrus says and IVM podcast in total. Uh, I would also like to get a mention as I am a huge fan of the show and keep listening to it all the time. Below mentioned are my stats. After this, he has a question also, but these are his stats. <laughs> all they have to uh, do is lie about their stats. <laughs> Basically, yeah, because this does seem like a lie. This does seem like a lie. Cricket equivalent, sorry, Silvery, or when they put the thing up, you know, saying "Star Sports, I love you." You just put that up, and you know the broadcaster has to shoot it. <laughs> exactly. So it, I don't know how true this can be because he says he has heard 591 episodes in total of us. So that's an oh. average. An average of so we have about 590 episodes, no? So he says he's heard yeah, every he episode. Have you reached that number? Yeah. Uh, well, he knows there. exactly what the number is for some. Yeah, reason. he must have gone and checked in his app. How many episodes <laughs> out now? <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. So he says average episode 50 minutes, right? So I've heard them fully, fully twice, back to back in the last one year, and even thrice for some episodes, which he, which I'm not even counting. He says so that comes 591 into 50. That is about 50 minutes. 25 into two. That is fifty-nine thousand one hundred minutes. That is nine hundred eighty-five hours. Is according to this guy's calculations. So forty-one days of total listening that he spent with Cyrus says. So if it's true, man, you need help. Uh, but thank you also. <laughs> but, but this is the guy who will appreciate peeing in the bottle. This is the guy who will appreciate using less uh, toothpaste on the toothbrush. This is the guy who will understand our pain and anxiety. Uh, listen. Silvery, let's show respect to those people who are doing this. Yeah. Let's not look for medication to help them. Not yet. <laughs> let's just be nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We should be absolutely. Thank nice you. Absolutely. Here. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, uh, especially when my wife I mean, says things like, "Who wants to listen to you?" Uh. <laughs> also, that not just uh, he heard all these episodes. He also wasted wasted an hour to do all these calculations for sending this email. Wow. Uh, really? uh, great, great uh, dedication. The lockdown so has given us so much time, no? Yeah, I, 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 I'm seriously sitting with comedians right now. If you think that that took half an hour to do those calculations, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> the comedians don't have to be as quick as you think, by the way. Huh? Yeah, you can, you can learn a whole script and then pull pull it up that way. You know, you don't have to really be into the. Akash is the only smart one. Akash, who's the dumbest comedian that you work with, other than me? Have you ever met a really dumbest comedian, like? Of course, must be a couple. What? I don't think comedians are never dumb. Comedians at least have a lot of emotional uh, quotient. Like they, they okay. might not have the highest IQ, but they're very emphatic and stuff. What are you saying is the thought it, processes stupid, are always lateral and interesting. Music में होता है. Stupid music में मिलेगा लोग तुम्हें. Dumb लोग एकदम ऐसा doornail जैसा. Ah, you're a musician also. Can you name five dumb musicians? No, because they're all friends of mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you can't mention rarities of the rare and all that to them. It's a waste of time. Yeah, what do you mean? Rape is commonplace. What is? What does it mean? But, but I think it's also testament to the fact that friendships don't require intelligence. They require bonding. You know what I mean? Yeah. Intelligence is highly overrated. Nobody wants intelligence. We want common sense. Yeah. Don't pass yeah. it off as intelligence. Intelligence is being a wise man. You know, uh, a Maharishi, so to speak, a person, a philosopher, but not really. I don't think intelligence. What do you think, Amit? Intelligence? No, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I, I think base level intelligence we need when we're talking to somebody. But beyond a point, yeah, then it doesn't matter so much. Mm. Yeah, we in our strive to reach this intelligence, this uh, ultimate frontier, we should not disregard the fact that all we do need to interact nicely with people is common sense. You know, yeah. 
Yeah. That's that's all I'm saying. Like toothbrush and toothpaste. Keep it short. Keep it small. Keep little toothpaste on it, and it's just common sense. But no, I want to put the whole can. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you, know, you have the fluoride all over your mouth. You know, and you come out. You feel like a hero. I mean, that's just stupid. Really, Rajesh Srivastava does that. By the way, we met him yesterday. He came on the set. Very sweet guy. Oh, wow. Very nice. Yeah. Mm. Hey, he was dressed. Uh, what do what's uh, the the Instagram picture of you oh, with the haircut? That when ah oh, correct correct. So there's this is Bobby Deol, the actor. Huh? Who at eight in the morning, he called me out of the trailer to say good morning. So I just opened the door to say good morning, and he took a picture. Yeah. Yeah, and then they, he said, but, they, I, but I, I look like a, the guy in your garden who you know does your you know the mali or something. Uh-huh. And, he's, and then he laughed and left. Ha ha ha. Did, like, did yeah, you I know see, my reputation is further destroyed. <laughs> did you see the comments around it? There were two yeah, in particular which comment, I thought Johnny were funny. Bravo, do your legs, Photoshop. Well, yeah. yeah so I, what do I care? So the legs okay. thing were funny, but the one that I the one that I thought really funny was not Johnny Bravo. It was yeah. Johnny Bravo becomes Johnny Bowo. That was funny. That's been clever. Common sense. Where's the intelligence? Quite yeah. intelligent thing is, man. That's fine. I still yeah. thought that was funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt hurt. I felt hurt. <laughs> That's <laughs> what makes it funny. Yeah. 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 So, so what I hate yeah. about this Instagram and all this, the instant feedback. Who needs that shit? Even if it's good, it's pointless. This is really? the same man who once on Cyrus says, "Cock and Bull says, I live for life. I love the instant feedback it gives." <laughs> this was too quick. Before I could breathe. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay. All right, boys, can I, can I be off? No, 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 we didn't get to Yogi's question. Uh, oh. That was his fact, you know. That's the question about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He so much love and respect. Yeah. He sat through 590 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> he aborted <laughs> after the praise. Are you full, guys? Let's uh, move on. Yeah. Sorry, go on. All right. Uh, he says, my question for AMA. I have observed. So uh, I had narrowed down this question because I thought that we would definitely talk about this. What he's going, what he's going to mention in his uh, question. He goes, uh, I have observed that not a single episode of yours goes by without mentioning Arnav at least once, which we did not do this episode, which is great. Is it because did, he's made himself too late? Yeah. Is it because he's made himself such a prominent benchmark in the media industry, or he's simply a parody of the whole media circus? He's now that uh, phantom figure in the background. Whatever you do, you can't ignore him. He's there. He's with you. He guides you. Yeah. Your thoughts, your movements. He, he's how a voice you move in everyone's head. Today. Yeah, he's he like is. a voice. In, yeah. he, in fact, he's a whole panel of voices. It's just not just one. <laughs> six, fifteen. Yeah, but I, I only think Arnob has is seasonal with us. You know, when he's doing something absolutely crazy, like the the whole jail thing and all that, uh, the yeah. whole Sushant Singh Rajput thing. There, there are quiet moments sometimes in the year. Also, we should just remember that. Yeah, absolutely. The last couple of weeks, not much. Not yeah, I much. think you're exactly right. Right. I mean, like it's when he is in the news, we talk about him. Right. If yeah. he is not personally in the news, then we talk about like you know right wing media, left wing media. He's in his own news yeah. all the time, so that doesn't count because when no, you're in your own news, you can that. decide. You know, India is behind me. Yeah, but no other channels mentioning it. You know, it's a little strange. <laughs> but but let's let's give the devil his due. We need him. Uh, without him, comedy would be bereft of what thirty percent of material hey, at please, the moment. So no, please, you are clearly twenty-five. Not, uh, watching twenty-two. Sixteen. Meet me halfway. I think the, I, I personally feel like the less we talk about him, the better, because there's enough people talking about him. You know what I mean? When he, for example, yeah. talks a lot about yeah. himself. Yeah. He's about eighty percent of the persons who talk about himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you once. I heard him talking third person. My, I said, this is the greatest man ever. This is it. You can't talk to people in a five star hotel in third person. Mm. And Did Arnaud you? believes, but you are Arnaud. You can't see that. It's <laughs> just amazing. How strong do you guys think are Arnaud's chances of ever becoming prime minister? I would say pretty high. I, I'm more worried about Kangana uh, getting a ticket because I think okay. she clearly has a path uh-huh. in her head. Yeah. And I think Kangana is the one who's going to get into politics, and then she will have a one-point agenda after Udav Thackeray and Karan Johar. And I don't <laughs> think that may not help the country. So, yeah, so uh, I I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys, but I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with some friends, right? Mm. Yeah, and we were the talking Yogi about Arnav. To, Yogi versus the anchor, and yeah. now the actress is into it too, right? Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. So, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. So because I mean, I think I, I really feel like all of these people are positioning themselves to be uh, Narendra Modi's successor, because the natural successor is not really there anymore, right? No, but uh, what we've uh, got understood in the modern world is look at the unique personality of the decade, Mr. Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. He, frankly, for the generation that actually voted uh, in 2016, was a television yeah. personality. That's where he came from. Terrifying. So, no whether it's Arnav or Kangana, they're getting a new sort of platform, a new sort of base. You don't have a base like I'm one of the, uh, you know, the masses, or there's this area which follows me, or there's this caste which follows me. I have my base through this many years of 
being myself on a channel or in you know, films or whatever. But that seems to be a serious one now. No, but it's a really interesting phenomenon, right? That where you're creating these pan-national bases rather than a geographical location, right? And you're slicing off different people in this. And you know, the same thing will work on the left. It's not like the same thing won't work on the left. No, no, it's where not. you create these people with these pan. It's a really interesting phenomenon. So uh, Kishan Kanaya, Kanaya Kumar, uh, Kishan Kanaya. Is, yeah. uh, since- uh, Kanaya. Can I go yeah, slightly on that path? He was, you know, getting the right figure. publicity. Yeah, it was the television figure. and his appearances and all that was making him a celebrity. Of course, yeah. there's much more to him than these yeah. guys, to be honest. But uh, I think you, without using these platforms, you won't become, as you say, pan-Indian. Yeah. Uh, the presence, which he is, whether you like it or not. Or no, based. Kangana is. She yeah. was a North Indian phenomenon. Now she's known in South India yeah. because of all this activism uh, or East yeah. India or wherever else. So I think uh, the time has come now for comedy to send one of their children into uh, Lok Sabha. Sai, Rasai, Rasai, Rasai. I have only three requests. Air condition, Chalta hai nahi. In Parliament? I'm very worried that the new Parliament building is coming. By the time you get the new Parliament Amit, building, will be there. The fight continued in this film is on every day. <laughs> Me and Bobby are the only two people who want the AC on. You should see all the others. Arjun Rampal, I'm feeling cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> six packs, I'm feeling cool. Oh. Okay, forget the actors. The girls on set, to a, every single girl wanted it off after some time. The sound guy kept putting it off. I had. Uh, this was my real battle, my crusade. <laughs> I fought for the AC people of the world. I thought about all of you all and I said, no, we will stand together. We will form a chain, a human chain. We will go straight to Delhi and we will fight for air conditioning in bloody studios. I mean, it's an air conditioning studio. Why the hell did we come there in the first place? Oh, And it always is AC in the morning. So first two hours are great. By 3.30, you start feeling that you've been cheated. You know, like you have a five hotel to eat dinner and then you start, uh, two drinks came out, everything's good. And then as you get your meal, you're sweating and you know, everything, they just put it off. Yeah. I mean, really, when is this going to end this cruelty? <laughs> India can't just look at uh, one or two things and say, these are problems. Air conditioning, parking, uh, you know, yeah. construction work, rude rickshaw drivers, uh, the toothpaste issue that we discussed. I want to put a list down that has to also be looked at. The small things matter. They do matter. Yes. Akash, would you like to add? No, no. You are sort of. You are my Akash, leader. are you upset because we lost the third game, but we won the series here? Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's becoming a little bit now scripted. Okay, listen, uh, guys, that's it. That's the show. Can I plug something? Please. Okay. Plug. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Hey, guys, exciting no, news, friends. I am starting a new YouTube channel. Uh, it's, yeah, and it will be out by the end of the month. In the meanwhile, please follow me on Instagram or on Discord if you are there or on YouTube or wherever. Huh? Because I, you know, otherwise Netflix will not happen. And if Netflix doesn't happen, I can't run for MLA. So please, <laughs> for Cyrus' party, you know. Why a What's the new, new channel, channel called? Akash Mehta. Why, why a new channel? What's, What's the, uh, the channel called Akash Mehta? Well, I'm, yeah. Uh, Is it Aadhaar card or a channel? Both, actually. What the hell? Don't you already uh, have a YouTube channel? It's called, yeah, Kuchvi Mata is going to be a stand-up channel. And I'm okay. glad you asked, Amit, because the new channel will have uh, uh, the cricket podcast. It'll have Akash and Friends podcast. It'll ah. have Shits podcast with me and Naveen. It'll have uh, music that I'm making right now. It'll come out there. It'll ah. have uh, small, like, non... How to get to Alibaba and back comedy. without uh, seeing plans. I'm just giving you other subjects that someone like me would be interested in. Like yeah. what? I want to go to, to Alibag and back without seeing plants. That's a great idea. I also yeah. want to uh, do some education stuff there. So I really want to talk about financial markets because I feel like uh, I have grown up in the house and my friends are all pissing away their money, dude. Like, look at Cyrus. <laughs> you know, and, and I just feel like I need to inculcate this good savings behavior in all of them, you know, mm. before it's too late. You don't do bank of business. Cyrus, I'm looking at you, Cyrus. It's not too late. It's too late for me. I'm married. I have no control over anything. I'm just trying to pee in a bottle. I've told you my problems. You're whatever finance. God, really. Uh, anyway, but as we say bye, I just want to say we'll be back with guests soon. So yes. uh, what was our show called? Cyrus says, huh? That will also be back. <laughs> you should also plug them. With. Guest comes on the show, takes over the show, plugs himself for 20 minutes. It's called Akash Mehta YouTube channel and it launches soon. Yeah? Yeah. Yay. All right, boys. I have to go and brush my teeth. See you. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. All right, bye. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. Send us your questions on Twitter on Cyrus Says In. Or you can email us, even if you're not female, on what Cyrus Says at gmail.com. Football Should Ball. Presenting Football Should Ball. A show about three friends discussing our favorite game over a beer. Sometimes three, maybe even five. 
Hi, I'm Shiva, and with me are my two sidekicks, Kaurav Sapre and Kartik Ayer. Sidekick? You mean like Batman's Robin or Van Persie Robin? No, I mean like Alexis Sanchez, but with a little more skill than just playing the piano. Ha! Just shows how the best players at Arsenal are mere bench warmers at United. But well, thank you, Ayer. But you're a Fulham supporter, so whenever you say anything to support me, I question my beliefs. Just like how Griezmann would say. एक बार मैंने जो डिसीजन ले लिया तो मैं अपने आप की भी नहीं सुनता बैंटर असाइड वी विल टॉक मैच रिपोर्ट ट्रांसफर रूमर्स टॉप कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी फैंटेसी फुटबॉल पिक्स एंड सो मच मोर सो ग्रैब अर एंड ट्यून इन टू फुटबॉल शुटबॉल एवरी वेंसडे ऑन द आई वी एम पॉडकास्ट एप वेबसाइट ऑफ वेर एवर यू गेट योर पॉडकास्ट हाउ मेनी टाइम्स हैव यू मोटिवेटेड योर सेल्फ टू इम्प्रूव योर स्लीप और लूज वेट और बी मोर प्रोडक्टिव How many times have you failed? Hi, my name is Ashtin Doctor. Tune into my show The Habit Coach Podcast where we focus on creating small tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big impossible tasks. So make listening to me a habit every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or on your favorite podcasting app.